Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. So today I'm going to show you how to make improvements to the loading performance of your web page. This can be done by prioritizing the resources which needs to be loaded under the critical path of a web page. When the browser has to load resources for a web page, then it assigns different kinds of priorities to those resources. These priorities typically range from highest to high and then to medium all the way down to low. For instance, any CSS resource will have the highest priority and scripts will have high priority. The priority of CSS and scripts can be turned to low when we are using the async attribute with them. You must be thinking how setting these priorities to internal or external resources will help us achieve improved loading performance for our website. Well, the answer is simple. We assign highest priority to resources which are critical for immediate loading of important functionality and visual elements. The resources whose loading can be deferred to a later time can be assigned a medium or low priority. So how do we even assign these priorities? We can prioritize the resource loading by the browser using the preload and prefetch values of well attribute inside the link element. There is however a major difference between the preload and prefetch attribute values. Preload only works for the current web page which is being loaded and prefetch works for pages and resources which the user is supposed to visit or load in the future. Let's now take a look at each of them one by one to find out when it does makes most sense to use preload and prefetch as well attribute values. So when the web page needs a specific resource as soon as possible then well attributes preload value can be used to have the browser give it the highest priority. Using preload with any resource makes sure that it gets loaded before the browser's own automated resource prioritization kicks in. When using preload, we also need to use the as attribute and its value. For CSS, the value of the as attribute will be style and for scripts, it will be script. So as indicated in this example, we are preloading the styles2.css and script1.js files, which simply means that the browser will prioritize the loading of these two files and will load them first. And then for the rest of the resources, it will use its default prioritization setting. So in this example, to load the style sheets and scripts, the browser will use its own resource prioritization. And this simply means that the style1 and style2 CSS files will be loaded with the highest priority and then the script1 and the script2 JS files will be loaded with a high priority. Now let's say that we want to preload the script1.js file because it is required for a critical operation which is to be performed on the web page. What we can do is we can preload this script1.js file before any other resource is loaded by adding a link element with a rel attribute with preload value and the as value as a script. And now let's see the loading order of the resources in the web page. Surely enough, the script1.js file is being loaded first and then the rest of the resources are being loaded by the browser. In this way, we can preload any resource which we want to load. Now there is a catch over here. If you are actually preloading any script file but you are not really using it in a few seconds after preloading it, then the browser will show you a warning that you are supposed to use the preloaded script otherwise the preload operation will simply get wasted by the browser. So if I were to preload this script one and if I will simply comment out this piece of script element which is actually running the script in the browser, let's see what happens then. So the script1.js file is being preloaded but when we will see the console then you can see that there is a warning that this resource was preloaded but it is not really being used in a few seconds so this is why the browser will show you a warning. So this is still just a warning so if you want you can ignore it because sometimes we just want to preload a script file and then use it later when it is actually needed to be executed to save some CPU cycles. We can also preload a style sheet like we are preloading the script. All we need to do is provide the well value as preload and then the as value as a style which will indicate that this is a style sheet. Other file types can also be preloaded. We just need to change the value of the as because this is required by the browser to figure out the correct preloading order. To preload resources from an external origin like from that of a CDN or content delivery network. Then with preload, we will also need to use the cross-origin attribute. But for that to work, you will have to sort out your own cross-origin policies. And that is out of this video's scope. 
There is however a special case with preloading fonts. We have to use cross origin as anonymous when preloading them even if they belong to the internal network. For example, this CSS is using the Roboto font. So what we can do is we can preload the Roboto font for texts which need it. And that will make sure that the flickering with switching between different fonts for the text will not happen and the user will not see it. This will really streamline the loading of the web page. So what we need to do is we need to preload this web font and for that we need to provide a link element. So what we can do is we can preload this Roboto font and for that we can use a link element with the rel attributes value as preload and the as value as font. So over here you can see that we are preloading this font with the cross origin set as anonymous. So when we are not providing any value for the cross origin attribute then its default value is anonymous. The as value is font because this is a font and we can also provide the type which is the WOFF2 and then finally the URL of the font which is an external origin. So when we will save this code and when we will run it then we can see that this font is being preloaded after the style and script and the style sheet which is using this font is actually being loaded in the end because we are not preloading this style sheet. So this is how preloading works. We can preload the resources which we know that they are important for immediate rendering of critical components of a web page and we can load the rest of the resources at a later time if they are not really required for the critical path rendering of the web page. So next up is prefetch and prefetch well attribute value is not there to be used for the current page but it is for loading the resources which could be essential when the user navigates to the next page. This means that the resources marked for prefetch are placed lowest on the browser's priority ladder because the current page is more important than the next one. So this is index2.html and this can be navigated to from index1.html which we were looking at before. What we can do is when we are positive that the user is going to navigate to this index2.html then we can preload this page along with its resources from index1.html. This will make sure that this index2.html web page will be loaded as soon as the user navigates to it without any kind of delay. So to prefetch any resource on the current page, what we can do is we can use the link element with the rel attributes value as prefetch. And we also need to provide the URL of the resource within the href attribute. So over here, we are preloading the index2.html along with script3.js which this web page needs. So what will happen is when the index1.html page will load, then it will prefetch these resources and if we will navigate to index2.html, then there won't be any delay in the loading of these resources because they have already been prefetched by the browser. As you can see over here, the index2.html and script3.js are being preloaded by the browser. They have the lowest priority which simply means that the browser will load them at the end. And now when I will click on this index2 anchor link, then this page will be loaded. But there is no delay in their loading because they have already been prefetched by the browser. Also when any resource is prefetched then it is stored in a special cache of the browser which is called as prefetch cache. When any new page is requested then the browser first looks into the prefetch cache to see if it is there or not. In this example too you can see that the browser is loading index2.html file and script3.js from the prefetch cache and the priority is now highest and high because this current page is actually index2.html and this script belongs to this web page. This is why their priority is now highest. However, take caution in using prefetch too much because you may end up loading pages and resources which the user will never see and use. Always remember that many users access websites using mobile devices which may have been using a metered data connection to download the resources. So unnecessarily prefetching resources is going to be a burden on their metered data which should be avoided at all costs. So with that I'm going to take my leave from this video and do let me know what you think about it. If you like it then make sure to like the video and also subscribe to this channel. It will make sure that you will always be the first to know about any latest video updates. 
If you have any questions, then you know what to do. Feel free to use the comments area to ask your questions and I will make sure to reply to them. Until the time we meet in the next video, have a great day.